Our understanding of microbiology was fundamentally reshaped a few decades ago when it became apparent that many, many organisms around us cannot be grown in the laboratory, and thus we were unaware of their existence. In fact, we now realize that many branches of the tree of life exist, but we have absolutely no idea of the nature of the organisms that populate those branches and what they're doing in the environment around us. Metagenomics has provided a method by which to begin to assay these organisms and in fact can deliver genomic information, information about the metabolic potential that would otherwise not have been possible. The transformation is happening so quickly that it's almost like the tree is opening up in front of us. For example, very little is known about the Earth's terrestrial subsurface. Much research has been done studying the terrestrial surface and even the soil, but the region below the soil zone, which is out of contact with the sun and the solar-driven biosphere, is very little understood. It is only through the application of methods such as metagenomics that we are beginning to be able to take an inventory of the kinds of organisms that exist, to place them on a new version of the tree of life, and to start to build an understanding of the kinds of processes they mediate. And this is absolutely critical if we're going to understand how microbes and microbial processes transform elements in the subsurface and interconnect Earth's biogeochemical cycles. We define metabolic potential as the collective metabolic capabilities of subsurface microbial communities. And this is important because these communities mediate a lot of important biogeochemical cycles such as uh, cycling of carbon, sulfur, nitrogen, and iron. And it's important to understand that in contrast to humans and other higher organisms, microbes collectively have an incredible metabolic diversity. They can do things like break down wood, they can oxidize ammonia, they can respire rust. So these capabilities influence uh, biogeochemical cycles. But the ultimate goal of SFA 2.0 is to develop a predictive understanding of biogeochemical cycles that are occurring in the subsurface and in their broader environment of the watershed. This can have global consequences if we're looking at greenhouse gases and, and climate change. Uh, microbial communities can have net influx or efflux of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. They can also produce nitrous oxide, which is a potent greenhouse gas or they could produce or consume methane, which is another potent greenhouse gas. And these gases that are produced in the subsurface can communicate with the external environment, either through transport of groundwater to rivers, for example, or diffusion of these gases up through the soil, exchanging with the atmosphere. So it's important for us to have a predictive understanding of what these communities are doing, how they're influencing biogeochemical cycles and the effects on greenhouse gases, for example. And, and metabolic potential component is trying to nail down and define what, what the metabolic activities are of the subsurface biota uh, under conditions of interest.